People, when they think about corals and coral reefs, they just think about shallow, warm waters with lots of sunlight. But actually, corals can exist in deep and dark waters all over the world. It's common to say that we know more about the Moon and now about Mars than we know about the deep ocean, and that's true. But we should explore the ocean and the sea because that's where most people's livelihoods depend upon and where our immediate conservation concerns are located. It's not on Mars. My name is Marina Carreiro Silva. I'm a deep sea ecologist and I'm dedicated to research on cold water corals. The deep waters around the Azores are home to some of the most diverse coral gardens in the Atlantic. Coming to the Azores during my holidays with my grandparents and being able to play in the rock pools and watch all the sea urchins and fish, I felt connected with the ocean and since then I always dreamt about becoming a marine biologist. I actually started by studying tropical corals during my master and PhD and then I learned about the existence of these uh, cold water corals in deep waters and I was amazed and I wanted to learn more about it. Cold water corals can be considered architects of the deep ocean because they built these kind of uh, forests or cities where many other organisms find their shelter and places to feed and to breed. So it means that corals can increase enormously the natural diversity that exists in the deep ocean. Here in the Azores, you mostly find gorgonians or black corals that can grow more than two meters high. Black corals are very interesting animals because they have found to be one of the most long-lived creatures in the deep sea. They can live for 4,000 years. But they grow very, very slowly. They grow less than one millimeter a year. And this makes them vulnerable to human activities because if you remove one of these organisms from their natural environment, then it will take thousands of years for it to grow again to its natural form. Deep sea trawling can completely wipe out coral communities in the seafloor. Here in the Azores we are very lucky because trawling is banned, but we have long line fishing. It also causes impact on corals because the corals can become entangled in the hooks and this affects large corals that take longest to grow. But we have been working together with fishermen to educate them about the potential threats. I'm Tom Morato, I'm a Portuguese marine scientist currently working at the University of the Azores. Over the last 10-15 uh, years we have been uh, studying the deep sea in order to know the species that live in the deep ocean in the Azores area, which is large, about 1 million square kilometers. One of the main problems when doing deep sea research is that it's very expensive because we usually need uh, big research vessels and expensive equipment. We decided to build our own camera system that can be operated from small vessels, what we call the Azore Drift Cam, that we can bring to any place around the world to do deep sea exploration. We don't need any special technicians, engineers or ROV pilots. We do this seven times a day when we are at sea. So the beauty of this system is the capacity to do a rapid appraisal of the sea floor, and then with that information we can inform the more expensive platforms like the ROVs where they should go to have uh, a better coverage of, for example, a coral garden or to collect specific specimens that we can't put a name on. So. Our work together with the fishermen has been helping change the way that they see the environment and also their activities. Many of them never had the opportunities to see how the seafloor looks like. What is a black coral? What is a coral? It helps them to understand why that needs to be preserved. Over the last 20 years, with involving them in our research, they are open to discuss where new marine protected areas should be located. And in recent years, 
we had this community of fishermen that asked the government to implement a new MPA close to the area where they used to, to fish because they found that there were not many fish there anymore. I'm mostly dedicated to the ecology and biology and tell me more to the management. But we work together because we look at the images and we identify a potential area of conservation interest so that then we can advise the Azorian government which areas to set aside as marine protected areas, for example. I'm really lucky because what we are doing today is still exploration. We are visiting places that no one has visited before. We are seeing things that no one has seen before, and this is addictive. And we get addicted to do exploration, to know more, to go to places where no one has been, to see if we can find a new species. For me, it's really important to know the natural capital in the Azores. What are the important ecosystems and habitats? What of those habitats are vulnerable? So we can preserve and protect our marine environment for our future generations.